The pattern bar technique is a great way to introduce complex and appealing designs into kiln-formed glass. There are many approaches to the pattern bar technique. In this lesson, we'll focus on what we call the segment slab approach. A segment slab is a block of sheet glass strips that are tack fused together. The slab is cut into parts that are placed within a containment system and fired. By carefully planning the negative spaces that the glass will flow into, you can achieve an enormous variety of patterns, ranging from tight and geometric to more organic and flowing. In this lesson, you will learn how to make a segment slab, how to prepare it for the casting process, tips and tricks for designing with segment slabs, and considerations for finishing pieces of work. To get started, you'll need to choose the appropriate glasses. Because the prolonged heat work used in this process exceeds bullseye's testing parameters, we recommend testing the glasses you select for compatibility and color stability. Opalescent glasses will work well with this technique because they will develop into distinct patterns during the process. If you choose a transparent glass, pair it with a lighter opal to enable patterns to develop in the next step of the process. Here we've chosen two opalescent colors. To make a segment slab, first cut the glass into strips about 25 millimeters wide. Then clean the strips and stack them on a kiln shelf, alternating colors within the stack. We are stacking eight layers deep to promote flow during the next stage of the process. Once the stacks are in the kiln, use a block to square up one side of each stack. To avoid having to dam the glass with fiber paper, simply fire the stack to a low tack fuse temperature of 1300 degrees Fahrenheit. At this temperature, the glass strips will fuse together without flowing. After the slabs have cooled, it's time to cut them into parts. Consider the size of the segments used for the design. Using many small segments will result in an intricate design. Using larger segments will yield fewer pieces to pattern with. For our project, we'll cut the slabs into small rectilinear parts. To do this safely and efficiently, set up a jig to create uniform segment sizes when cutting. Pass the tile saw blade through the bar slowly. This will provide a clean cut and minimize chipping of the edges. With the segments now cut, we're ready to create the final design. In composing the piece, we'll arrange the parts into a pattern that will allow the glass to flow into the negative spaces. Since the way the glass flows will be critical to the design, this step deserves careful consideration. Here, we've arranged the same style of segments differently to create different final patterns. The more negative space you have, the more flow you will achieve in your design. However, leaving too much space can lead to areas not filling completely. Use enough glass to create a final piece of 8 millimeters or thicker. To do this, find the volume of the form in cubic centimeters and multiply it by 2.5 to get the amount of glass in grams. For this round form with a 10 centimeter radius, we need about 630 grams of glass to get to the 8 millimeter thickness. Once you've settled on a design, place the segment parts onto a primed shelf within a containment system. In this case, we used a vermiculite ring lined with fiber paper. The containment system will prevent the glass from flowing outside of the footprint of your desired final piece. Then load the shelf into the kiln and fire the piece until flat. It generally takes one to two hours at 1525 degrees Fahrenheit for the glass to fill the negative spaces and flatten. Now that the piece is cast and cooled, it's ready to be finished. Using a wet belt sander, dress the edges up to a 400 grit finish. Be sure to dress any hard edges with a small bevel to prevent chipping in the final piece. Primer that has stuck to the bottom due to heat work during the casting process can be removed by cold working. 
Clean the piece and place it on a primed slumping mold to impart the final shape and fire polished finish. Here you can compare the final piece with the original layup. Now that you know the basics, let's try changing some variables in the process to achieve a variety of patterns. Varying the size of the segments can lead to different flow patterns. In this example, we used larger parts in combination with larger negative spaces, resulting in a piece like this. Arranging the segments in different orientations will create variations in the pattern. Placing the parts on edge will preserve the sheet glass stripes. When segment parts are placed on a solid color side of the bar, the design becomes more geological, pushing out strata as the glass flows. Introducing a transparent with a light opalescent glass can lead to an interesting design. When cast, the transparent layers lead the eye into the interior of the piece. Placing the segment parts on a base sheet before casting can also produce some special effects. The flow of the parts is buffered by the volume of the base sheet, causing small windows between the cast segments. Seen from the shelf side of the casting, the segment parts have pushed into the base sheet to create a pillowing effect. Working with the Segments Lab, you can find many new avenues to explore pattern, based on skillful glass cutting, smart use of negative space, and understanding how glass flows in response to heat.